Bastards are killing me. Should have never hired him in the first place. I actually watched uh, the BS of A last week. I think it was on Thursday. My wife and I were in bed and we watched it. It's really getting funny. Um, I mean, at this rate, give him another, I don't know, 20 years and it'll be right. But um, uh, really, really funny. Final episode for this season is this week. I want to tell you about David Horowitz, uh, Horowitz's new book. Um, it's called The New Leviathan. And um, the reason why this is so good is it, it's easy for me to say you have no idea what you're up against. But if you look at this book in the appendix, it's all things like this. Um, appendix 14, comparative government funding of conservative and progressive environmental groups. And it breaks down what we are, um, what we're facing. And then it names all of the groups on both the progressive and the uh, conservative side and shows you what you're up against. It is really well researched. It is um, really well written. A little breathtaking. Uh, David is a friend of the broadcast um, and, uh, and a friend of, of freedom and a, and a friend. Thank you, David. Uh, he's the president of uh, the um, Freedom Center and he's with us now to tell us about uh, the book. David. Let's start on looking at the groups and breaking out some of the things. For instance, let's start with environmentalism. Can you take us through Behind this? Behind these groups are 115. We're missing his microphone, I think. Where's his microphone? 115. Oh. Here. here, I'll stand by here for a second. Did, you, okay. did it pop off or something? Behind these, <laughs> Behind these groups are 115 progressive foundations with $104 billion in assets. Conservatives have one-tenth of that, the conservative foundations. If you think of the Koch brothers, who, who are the big boogeymen of the left now, they've got a, a, a foundation with $200 million. But the Ford Foundation alone has $10 billion, which is 50 times as big as the Kochs. And they're behind the environmental movement. They're the ones who created the environmental uh, uh, resources Defense Council, uh, for example, and the and the Ford and other foundations like them, Rockefeller, uh, MacArthur, uh, just a whole raft of them. They then fund uh, 500 environmental leftist groups, groups that think they're corporations or they're anti-capitalists to begin with. So for them, it's the the corporations that are desecrating the planet. Of the 552. They have assets of nine and a half billion dollars, which is bigger than the Environmental Protection Agency's budget, which is only eight eight point seven billion. The conservatives, the what the the environmental foundations that are supporting our free market, individual rights, individualist system, there are only thirty two of them. And they have thirty eight million dollars. So when you go into these battles, the political battles over the environment, and over controlling our lives, the defenders of freedom are, are, are outgunned 250 to one. Right, and if you, if you look at this, I mean, 9.3 billion to 38 million, there's no way you can fight that. Yeah, and then the government funds the left. Look at that, $568 million a year versus 700,000. It's supposed to be about the environment, but this is really the battle against America, against uh, individual rights and property rights, uh, and the battle for it. And look how we're outgunned. So, okay, so this is just, um, uh, this one's just in the environment. Let's go to immigration, because that's where the, that's where Arizona is, um, you know, the Supreme Court was at Arizona today. Show me Im er, um, immigration here. Well, this is amazing. Here, here we have the secondary groups. Again, the two leading immigration groups that have uh, led the fight for open borders, for voting rights, for illegals, uh, to call people who are here illegally undocumented as though they lost their documents. I mean, they didn't lose their documents. They never applied for them. Uh, that is, again, the Ford Foundation. It created MALDEF, the Mexican-American Legal Defense Fund, and La Raza. I mean, it took them. They were tiny little organizations with completely different agendas, and it made them into gigantic, radical groups. Um, and you, see, you can see the funding here when you take all the groups. There were nine... Uh, Nine conservative groups that want citizenship, the idea of citizen and borders and national sovereignty. And they're up against 117 from the left. They have $15 million versus $200 million. 
Um, and then look at the grants. I mean, the federal government is funding the anti-American groups. And I say anti-American, you were talking about the EU and Soros idea we shouldn't have any nations. As though there are rights without nations. The, we have the unique rights that we have, these, the rights that government cannot take away our God-given rights. That's American. That's, that's uh, you know, they, we've had a 250-year history of developing those rights. They don't have those, you know, Europeans don't recognize those rights. A European a right is your right to stick your hands in your pockets and, uh, and give it to somebody whom they politically want. So this is the most fundamental battle of all, the battle over borders, the battle over assimilating people to an American culture. Okay, so David. Um, and, and let me just I, say, multiculturalism, which is the assault on this idea, we don't live in a multicultural society, we live in a multi-ethnic society. We welcome people of different ethnicities, but that we only have one culture, not a multiculture, the American culture. If you take away the American culture, everything else is going to disappear. That's why the left is behind multiculturalism, because they want everything else to disappear. How do you, I mean, because this is Leviathan. I mean, it is just... It's Soros on steroids, that's oh, yeah. what it is. It just never ends. And a lot of these uh, foundations um, have gone wrong. And they go wrong because people like Ford, he got busy. Um, he was trying to save and Ford. And was taken over. Right. And he just, he walked away. He knew, I was talking to a friend of mine who knew Henry Ford, and he said, I had lunch with him. And he said, the biggest mistake I ever made was letting go of that exactly foundation. Exactly right. And when he resigned from the board, he said, you are working to destroy the system that created okay. this wealth. So here he is, alive, and they take it over. But almost, if you look at these, almost every single foundation that started out conservative goes awry. Yeah. Well, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. Uh, Stephen Ro I interviewed Stephen Rockefeller when I was doing a biography of the Rockefellers 30 years ago. And he said, I'm a socialist. Now he's the head of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. Now it's funding socialism. So how do we, how do we fight this? I mean, well, they, all, all these foundations exist under the tax code. So in the first place, you redefine what's political. According to the IRS, it's political if you support a candidate or a political party. But it's not a, a political if you're supporting open borders or if you're supporting uh, cap and trade uh, or Obamacare. And all these foundations do that. So just make that political How and, and take away their tax exemption. We have so many people that, um, um, I mean, again, the Koch brothers, they're some of the only ones. The, Ever since I came over from the left, I, the first thing that really bothered me was we had no ground war. Where were the grassroots organizations that were defending America? Because we didn't think we needed them. We exactly. Had, and we the, had the culture. And we had everything. I, I said, where, where's the ruling class? I mean, where, where are the people who, I, of course, there is no ruling class. There were, there were entrepreneurs who made a lot of money because they've been very creative and, you know, created a lot of jobs uh, and changed the way we live. Where are they? There were, there were none defending the system that created their wealth. And then along came Obama and Glenn Beck. You were, you were like among, you know, the absolute first. Uh, the Tea Party. People suddenly realize, Obama has made people realize, we can lose it all. And we can lose it all. And we're close. I mean, we're really close. We're what, what, an administration what? or two away from losing it. Uh, and the Koch brothers are the first, you know, really wealthy capitalists who have been willing to get into the battle openly. Now, you know what that means. That means they're going to destroy your reputation. They're going to bloody you. They're going to embarrass you uh, or attempt to in front of all your friends and call you every kind of name. If you're a gazillionaire, I mean... What do you need this for? I tell you, I you know, um, I, I know, uh, I know Richard Mellon Scaife, um, who oh, is he's a he's an he's I mean, a wonderful he is, man. They try to assassinate him. Oh my gosh, it, I I contend if it wasn't for him over the years, I don't know if we would have had Reagan. I don't know if we would have had the end of capitalism. I mean, uh, communism. I mean, this guy has poured money into the Heritage Foundation for years and years and years. 
he was in the uh, in the hospital. Uh, I don't know, several months back. Occupy Wall Street occupied his front yard. Yeah, they're, I they're, mean, they're vicious, terrible, vicious. People. Um, and but just, he's just, like, he said he got out of the hospital and he said, "Oh, I was I was just upset that they were there. <laughs> I mean, I and I was I was someplace else. I want them. I wanted them there. there. Well, we need more people like yeah, very few people, Dick Scaife and and the Koch brothers. But here, the Washington Post actually reported. Dick Scaife was called the Daddy Warbucks of the, yeah. of the right. In one year, the Ford Foundation gives away more money than Dick Scaife has been able to give in 40 years combined. It's amazing. That's how, you know, what we have going for us is this is a great country with a great people uh, who, who don't want their lives controlled. But you know what? Here's, I mean, here's the thing. Obama is giving, I mean, he's taking money from weddings now. It's never enough money from these guys. It's just oh. never enough money. There's, and they, they've got so much. Their arsenal is so huge. And there's only so much as they bankrupt our 401ks, as they bankrupt all their savings accounts. They, they, you know, most people can't go out and buy a bunch of gold and, you know, have a, you know, an offshore account someplace. And so they're going bankrupt. They'll have the gold. And they'll set the rules. The rest of us, I know people who are giving till it absolutely hurts right now. Is that enough, or is it is it the ground war? Is we, it the we have well, we won the ground war in Wisconsin. Things are really changing. I mean, the, the, I'm I'm very optimistic because I see people finally waking up. Uh, the reason. <laughs> The reason they need so much money is because they have a big disadvantage, and that is they're fighting reality. They're going against human nature. They're going, <laughs> and so they're, they're always losing, mm -hmm. you know, but while they're losing, they can destroy everything. Do you, um, let me change to politics here real quick, because we've only yeah. got about a minute. Um, does, do you think Romney wins, and does it, is it enough just to say, at least he's not a communist, or he doesn't hate America? I think that Romney, uh, and but of course, it depends on everybody getting out there. We we won. Yeah. Everybody has to fight. But if everybody will fight, uh, I think we'll win by uh, the se seven points that Obama won last time. In other words, a landslide. I think so too. And I think uh, the minute uh, Romney gets in, uh, the economy is going to revive again. Uh, th the minute people just see that there's a sensible. Uh, person there who understands the system, uh, that'll happen. Look, politics is a never-ending battle. Romney's not going to be perfect. No. George Bush wasn't perfect. No, we've, we've, we've made Reagan, errors for I over... Mean, I, this is heresy, but Ronald Reagan, the welfare state, increased dramatically yeah. under him. You know, uh, we don't have perfect people, and no. we're not going to have perfect leaders. We need, that's why we need the grassroots and the ground war, and that's why your event at the end of July is going to be so important. That's 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 our insurance. Uh, let me tell you um, that uh, David Horowitz, I believe, is uh, one of the few guys that I, I, I can think of three. I think Roger Ailes, David Horowitz, and Dick Scaife were three people that most people don't know um, that were instrumental, gave me and my children a chance to have freedom in America. It's our turn now. Um, they have fought their whole lives to give us the uh, freedom that we have and to get people to listen and to give us more time. We've been given more time. Now what do we do with it? The book is The New Leviathan. It's available in bookstores everywhere. Thanks, David. Thank you.